The 2023 Ford Escape plug-in hybrid is a beautiful car, especially when we get into some of the new highlights that are standard inside of the 2023 model. It looks really, really sharp. A few notable things about the Escape plug-in hybrid. You're only going to find the wheels 18 inch, so you don't have any other options right from the factory. It's going to strictly be these 18 inch wheels. On top of that, it's strictly going to be available front wheel drive. So if you were hoping for an all-wheel drive escape, you do have to look at one of the other models. The plug-in, you're not going to find with anything other than front wheel. Because we're in the plug-in, we've got our little charge door off to the side there as well. And there is a cable that's included right from the factory, just right in the trunk right now. But it's going to be for level 1 charging, and it's a 20-foot cable. So really, really great that way. And it is nice because we can go 120 or 240 and level 1 versus 2, that's going to affect your charge times. I think the level 1 you're going to max out around 11 or 12 hours versus 3.5 to 4.5 hours when you're on that level 2 charge instead. So which way you go is going to be dependent on what your needs are. Like this thing has a 60 kilometer electric range out of it. So if you're not using that mileage, later on I just plug yourself in and then it's going to trickle charge overnight. So you got some different options that are available. But one really cool thing is that if you are plugged in through the Sync 4 media screen, you've got the flexibility of even setting your charge times and precondition the vehicle. So if you know that you want to get those cheap electricity rates from like 10 o'clock at night until 6 o'clock in the morning, you can set that up right through the screen. And then on top of that, one cool thing is that we can also set it to precondition the cabin at certain times. So if you know you're leaving the same time every day, all you have to do is, again, through that Sync 4 screen, select the times that you're going to be leaving, the days you're leaving, whether you want it to be warm, cool, hot, whatever the case may be. So it's pretty neat that we've got that available as an option. All right. I did mention we do have some pretty decent range out of this. So it's 60 kilometers, so you're about 37-ish miles. So we have a pretty decent range out of it. And you are going to really get the best benefit by plugging in. But if you're not depleting the range every day, I would just say trickle charging is going to probably be the best route for you instead few things that are going to be standard inside of the plug-in version of the Escape. You're always going to have the LED headlamps, LED fogs, and then this one has the LED light bar right above the grill, which looks really, really sharp when it's lit up at night. I like the styling, what they've done here. Now, this one has the added plug-in premium package, which is going to give you, so you've got the forward sensors. Inside the vehicle, it gives you the 12.3-inch digital cluster screen. On top of that, there's also the forward-facing camera, side view mounted cameras utilizing the backup camera for that full 360 view and this thing has park assist which is amazing now if you're looking for walkthroughs on how to use the steering wheel cluster or the media screen things like that you'll find them down in the description of this video but it's all relatively straightforward to use you'll also find a build link for this specific one and the contact information for yorkdale ford who were nice enough to lend this thing to me for the afternoon to shoot the video for you guys today but the technology inside of this thing is pretty respectable. Underneath the hood of the Escape plug-in. So the only engine choice that's available for the hybrid plug-in is going to be the 2.5 liter. I have technically even for the regular hybrid as well, it's going to be the 2.5 liter Atkinson hybrid. But looking from a power perspective, so the 2.5 liter plug-in is going to push up 210 horsepower and 155 pound-feet of torque. So it's pretty respectable power when it comes down to it. And that's going to be a mix. So we look at the horsepower and torque that's combined for the engine, as well as for the electric motor that's going to be included inside of this thing. The traditional hybrid, slightly less horsepower. But if you're looking for slightly more, look at the 2-liter turbocharged engine. That thing is a beast in and of itself, but it doesn't come in a plug-in. So if you want the best possible mileage, the plug-in is absolutely where you want to be because you also do have the plug-in electric miles on top of that. So 60 kilometers, which is pretty respectable. If you're handy doing some things yourself, you can easily top up fluids, check change your oil on top of that. So relatively straightforward. The Ford warranty is actually pretty respectable. So you've got three years, 60,000 kilometer or 36,000 mile for your basic, five year, 100,000 kilometer, and then 60,000 mile for your powertrain. And then you've also got an eight year, I believe it's 160 for your electrical components. So for the hybrid components, so pretty good coverage there. But in order to make sure your coverage stays intact, make sure you regularly maintain your vehicle. So regular oil changes, regularly maintaining your vehicle and things like that to get the best possible life you can out of your ride. 
you're spending, you know, 50, you know, 30, 50,000 dollars on a vehicle, you might want to take care of it. Filling up fuel inside of the Escape Hybrid is straightforward and it's just along our driver's side here. But there's one thing about the plug-in Escape that's different from the rest of the Escape lineup, and that's that this cover is locked. So that's got to do with depressurization. So if you ever want to fill up, just to the left-hand side of the steering wheel, there's a series of buttons. Just going to push in order to be able to unlock. And it's a capless system. Looking at fuel quality, doesn't matter which version of the Escape you're in, whether you're in the hybrid, the 1.5 EcoBoost, or the 2 liter. Just regular 87 fuel is all you're going to need to use inside of this thing, which is amazing. The Escape plug-in does have the reverse sensing system standard. We're always going to find the backup camera, rear wiper, and all that fun stuff. Escape lettering along the, ba the back does look very sharp. It pops that tiny little bit. And because this is the plug-in hybrid, we've got our plug-in hybrid badge along the very bottom right side of the liftgate. Now this one also has the trailer tow package. So we've got our four pins there. When we look at towing, so the Escape Hybrid, whether that's the plug-in or the traditional hybrid, you're looking at 1,500 pound max towing capacity. Inside of the 1.5 liter EcoBoost, you're going to be able to pull up to 2,000 pounds. And then in the 2 liter turbo, you're going to be able to pull up to 3,500 pounds. So the amount that you pull is going to depend on the engine that you've got. So if, you're if you want to max out, you have to look at that 2 liter turbo because you are looking at a 1500 pound towing capacity inside of the plug-in version of the vehicle. Now, one other thing, the lift gate inside of this thing is going to be power standard. So you can use the key fob in order to lift it up. There's a button just to the left-hand side of the steering wheel. There's also a foot activated lift gate available as an option. So if your vehicle had it, you could just swipe your foot underneath in order to open the lift gate up. And then just under the seat escape, we can also lift it up that way if we wanted to. Now this one does have our charge, our charge cable right from the factory because this is the plug-in hybrid. You do have the option you can get a at home charge station if you wanted to, but I mean, I mentioned it earlier, charging realistically, you could probably just do regular level one in a regular wall outlet in order to charge up if you wanted to. Save yourself a couple bucks rather than going home charging station. But if you wanted a charge station, check down in the description of the video for a link off to that instead. But there's not really a ton of stuff back here. Like off to the left side, there's a 12 volt power point. Off to the right, because this one has the added premium package, there's also a woofer off to the right-hand side there too. So we've got 10 speakers inside of this thing, which is amazing, and it sounds even better. This one does have the thermoplastic rubber tray that you can get right from the factory as well, which is great. And then lifting that up, you've also got the a mini spare tire, and that mini spare is now standard across the entire Escape lineup. But there are a few things that are slightly different, because this is the plug-in, it's funny, we've actually, typically the jack stand would be underneath the tire, but it's off to the left-hand side now, and some of the storage play, uh, space is now minimized. So it's very different from the regular gas versions of the Escape. So, I mean, I love it too at the same time, because realistically, it doesn't affect the cargo capacity whatsoever, the way that Ford's designed this thing. It's actually a really smart part of, the smart decision on their part to do it the way they did. They're just utilizing the storage trays slightly differently. But... This thing is a 60-40 bench, so 60 driver, 40 passenger. You can easily fold down one side or the other if you wanted to. So folding down the second row of seats. All you're going to do, drop down, and it's that simple. And when you've got the second row seats folded down, I mean, it just opens this thing up like crazy. Now, one thing, I've got the driver's seat set up for myself being six feet tall. So if you're a little bit shorter, if you're pulling the seats up a little bit more, you would get a little bit more space. So... How much space you need is going to depend on you personally, but very straightforward. And then one other cool thing, the lift gate is technically adjustable for the height, so we can adjust it as we want to. There's a button on the very outside of that we would push in order to shut it. You can also push and hold if you wanted to set a unique height, so it's not going to go past a certain point, which is useful if you've got a garage that's a little bit lower. Taking a peek at the vehicle size, so I'm six feet tall and I can easily clear this thing. There are the options for crossbars and roof rack carriers and things like that if you do need it as an option. Some technology you're going to find inside of this thing. Along the driver's side, you've got your five-digit number. So if you wanted to get into the vehicle without your key fob, you can do that. This thing also has the blind spot monitoring system on top of that. And then, as long as you've got the key fob on you, you could lock the vehicle this way. And you just slide your hand in to get inside. So this one has a nice metallic highlight along the door. 
that follows all the way throughout the dash too, which looks really sharp. Now, a few things. So that's going to look slightly different depending on the model of the vehicle that you're in. Like I was just in an ST line and it was like a carbon fiber type of an insert instead. So if you wanted something different, there are aftermarket 3M wraps and things like that that you could use instead. But this one, nice metallic highlight. There are our unlock and lock buttons, but also three driver memory buttons too. So we've got three individual settings for driver seat memory. So we could set up our driver seat the way that we want to and our side view mirrors. And then you would press and hold either one, two, or three. And that's going to save your perfect position for you, which is amazing. All of our basic side view mirror controls are there, window controls auto holders and then the speakers on top of that and because this one has the upgraded premium package there's also the 10 speaker bang on a Lufson sound system we'll get to that in a second but it sounds really really nice this is good i love the head-up display inside of this thing it's like not obtrusive it's just there it's nice and simple i like it all right some other highlights so the wheel inside of this thing steering wheel is great heated steering wheel all around and that's turned on just through the multimedia screen but if you're looking for a walkthrough specifically on the steering wheel cluster or the media screen you'll find it down in the description of the video so full walkthroughs i'm going to touch on some basics of strictly the hybrid version of the vehicle though so let's go through some basics by the left hand side we do have a button in order to be able to open and close the lift gate there also is one for the gas cover because we're in the plug-in hybrid, we do need to press that in order to be able to unlock the cover there. So just got to do with depressurization, all that fun stuff. There's a selector switch to figure out what's going on with the running lamps. And I always just recommend to keep it in the auto setting. Because this thing does have fog lamps, there's a button there we can push to turn the fog lamps on or off. And then just to the right of that, there's also a dimming switch. So we can also dim the brightness of the, media sc uh, the cluster screen and the multimedia screen using that switch. It's nice. Stick on the left side is going to be for our high beams, blinkers, along the right side for our front and for our rear windshield wipers. So the rear wiper, there's a button on the tip of the right stick in order to toggle the rear wiper on. This is really nice though. I like the glossy highlights of the steering wheel. They track fingerprints a tiny little bit, but it's not too crazy. This thing does have the adaptive cruise control system, so the set it and forget it cruise. And when we turn it on off, we can see what's going on inside of the head-up display, inside of the cluster screen. It looks really, really sharp. There are volume rockers. There's also a, a button you can push for voice command prompts. So you can change songs, radio stations. You can navigate using your voice. If you were hooked up through Android or iPhone devices, you'd also be able to use that button in order to activate either Google or your Siri Assistant too, which is great. A series of buttons along the right side. Top ones are to navigate through the cluster screen. The bottom ones are to either answer or hang up on a phone call, change songs, radio stations, all that fun stuff. Because we are in the premium package you can see speakers all over the place there's a speaker up along the dash there too this thing obviously does have a little glove box tiny little bit of storage space there twice and then you've got the sync 4 media screen so inside of the larger 13.2 inch you are going which actually is really the only option you're going to find inside of the plug-in and you're going to have this screen regardless of whether you get the premium pack or not the big difference is in the cluster screen so this is going to be the 12.3 inch screen there is the option for the smaller one instead, which looks kind of similar. So big difference are power levels off to the side there, the left side. Then you've got your speedometer off to the right hand side. But let's kind of move through and I'll explain the different parts that you need to know. And that's all done using the buttons off to the side here. So we're literally just going back, up and down, etc. Then you've got the menu button. So hopping through, pressing back, you've got your current fuel levels and then your current battery mileage so as of right now we have zero battery kilometers that are available so we definitely need to plug this thing in use regenerative braking and driving to charge up this engine or the electric motor i should say but we've got some flexibility in customizing this thing a little bit but if you want a full walkthrough on using the steering wheel buttons the cluster the media screen check down in the description of the video but some things that are ev specific You've got your energy counter, so trip one, two versus electric, which changes things out a tiny little bit. You've got also the electric driving for fuel economy, etc. So in order to change or in order to reset, all you're going to do is press and hold the OK button. And doing that is just going to reset all of your electric driving mileage there. So very straightforward, topping back into the menu there. And you've also got a few others. So eco behavior gives us a percentage point of how well we're doing. 
and then EV Coach as we drive is going to let us know when we should be braking, etc. So it is very useful if you want to maximize your fuel economy and your electric mile usage and things like that. Back out, you've got basic status information. So battery charge currently at 0%. No trailers connected. And then seatbelt. So I currently don't have my seatbelt plugged in. Moving back to our main menu there. Also have some basics for vehicle maintenance. Audio, navigation, phone, settings. And settings, just our display setup. And then vehicle settings. And then options for the head-up display. So you can kind of, there you go. So you can kind of see it's going a little bit crazy right now, but that flickering typically wouldn't be there. But you can see there, you've got a few different options and you can adjust a few things. So back in through the screen, you've got a few options that are available. So you can adjust out the position, brightness, or the size, and then also what content showing up. So distance indicator, how close are you to the vehicle that's in front of you? Lane keeping system, whether or not that shows up. Navigation, so I'm just turning everything on. But because we're an EV, so we're in the plug-in hybrid, along the left-hand side, you can see how much power we're using as we go. Along the very bottom in the middle there, that's how much we currently have left for our current drive. So as of right now, we're at zero kilometers for our EV range. So currently at nothing. So you could go a few different screens very easily. I honestly just recommend my view. If you go calming screen, watch this. Nice and simple. And then you've just got off to the left side what fuel level you've got and then your current electric range on top of that. All right, so this is the home screen for the Sync 4 media screen that you're going to find inside of the Escape plug-in hybrid. Maps off to the left, what's currently going on with station, so music that's currently playing, if your phone was connected, settings, features, and then your current apps. Climate control settings are baked into the screen along the very bottom there as well. But if you want to walk through like how to use navigation, connect a phone and things like that, you'll find it down in the description of the video. But I mean, if we look at the basics here, like the map, very responsive, which is great. Full screen view as well, if you wanted to go that route, which looks really sharp. I like it. You've got what's, as I mentioned, what station's currently playing, different sources, so like AM, FM, Sirius, XM, Bluetooth. If you had a USB stick with MP3s, you could plug it in in order to be able to set up USB music instead. If we were hooked up over Bluetooth, you could also stream music that way. Adding in a phone straightforward, there are a series of different settings that are available. So for radio settings, sound, vehicle settings, and things like that. So a lot of different options that are available there. Moving back, series of different features now. And because we're in the EV, so the plug-in hybrid, there are a series of different options available. If you look at drive mode, you've got four key modes that are going to be the same that you'll find across every escape lineup but slightly different because we're in the, or the plug-in, so you've got some different EV modes that are available. So if you look, there's normal, eco, sport, and slippery, but looking at normal, you've got auto EV, so the vehicle is going to determine if we're in gas or electric mode. EV now means it's going to force electric unless you gun it, in which case it's going to put you into gas mode instead. EV charge, which is really neat because you can do that. And what the EV charge means, so the car just started up, but with, uh, with EV charge, what it's going to do is as you're driving, it's going to charge up for you. One cool thing is that I was driving for about 15 minutes and it went from zero to about 11 kilometers. It's at 17 because I'm plugged in now, but it gave us about 10-ish kilometer charge in about 15 minutes, which is pretty nice. So you do have that available as an option instead. And then EV later means we're strictly gonna be in gas mode and it's saving your electric miles for later on instead. So you've got some different options that are available. As I said, whether you're an eco, sport, et cetera, is gonna depend on you. Because we're in the hybrid, most people are probably gonna be okay in eco mode, but I love me my sport mode. It's gonna hold on to the RPMs a bit more to give you a sportier performance. Compared to slippery, which is gonna play with your traction and stability control instead. But each one of those modes, I mean, you saw it there, gives you a few different options that are available too. So which ones are available as you go in each mode. So it is kind of nice. You've got that flexibility. I just love the drive mode settings there. It's really nice. There are a series of different driver assistance settings. So things like traction, stability control. We can toggle these things on off. Our blind spot system. So if anybody's entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle, it's going to highlight and let us know. Reverse brake assist, so if somebody's in behind us as we go to back up, it's gonna automatically slam on the brakes for us. So there are a lot of great safety settings there. Access is for the charge light, so whether or not that one shows up or not is gonna be a matter of preference. It is kinda of nice because we can see how full the battery is as we go. 
departure and comfort. This is really cool because if you tend to leave at the same times every day, you can select different times, you can select different days, etc. So just go time here. So let's say if you leave at, you know, 11 o'clock AM, yeah. And you want it to be nice and warm, nice and cool for you on these specific days, you can do that. You save it in and there you go. So at this time, every single day that you've selected there, it's automatically going to start the vehicle up or it's going to precondition the cabin for you. So if you want it colder in the morning, warmer in the evening, you've got that flexibility. It's really, really cool that you've got that available as an option. Yes, let's get rid of the selections. So really nice, we can clear all and you can literally set it up for however you want. Like if you're gonna leave the same time, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, you can do that. You can select what dates, what times, really, really useful that you've got that flexibility. So, I mean, I love it, so straightforward. Leave it seven o'clock a.m. every day, you want it nice and warm, you've got that flexibility. So good. And then all you're gonna do is save and then move back from there. But it is nice that you've got that departure and comfort setting. Obviously, you just wanna make sure that you're plugged in in order to get the best possible performance there, but. Then charge settings, you can see what's currently going on with charge levels. So as of right now, it's saying that well, we plugged in at 3.09 p.m. By 5.42, it's going to have us fully charged up. So we're two hours charging there. And that's just using one of the connected charge stations, so level two charging. But you've got charge locations as well. And adding in a location, very straightforward. So we can use this specific location. You're gonna save it as a home address if you want to. And this is great because if you only wanna charge up to a certain battery percentage at a location, you've got that flexibility. So let's say if we wanna charge up to 100, fix our schedule so weekends and week our weekdays and weekends so essentially monday to friday do we want to charge up from let's go da, 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 p.m so you can see there we can have a charge window so we're only charging from 7 p.m until 5 a.m and you can set up multiple charging windows at the same time so you can only have a max of two charging windows but it is kind of nice that you've got that available as an option you can delete out different charge windows as well. So it'll just charge any time at that point. Or again, as I said, if you wanted to just charge up at certain times of the day, we would have that flexibility. We're just kind of like doing a drag and drop in order to be able to do it. And then just trash these things out if you want to, to just let it charge at any point in time. And that's the same thing for weekends, weekdays, etc. So let's say if we wanted to only charge up. There we go. Let's get rid of this. Oh, wrong one. Let's say if we wanted to charge up, just do a drag. There we go. That's what I was looking for. We're just going to continue. Weekends, it's going to charge from 5 p.m. until 1 a.m. Weekends, you can charge at any time. And you can either save or edit. So if we save it, we've got that specific time set up. And you can see there, it's now bumped it because it's not going to start charging until we hit 5 o'clock. So one great thing is that you can turn that off. And now that we're plugged in, it should just, yeah, it should update it. There we go. And then you could edit it out if you want to. So if you just want to delete that delete you can and you can have multiple locations set up so if you've got you know your home work address whatever the case may be you can set all of these different things up and then there's also departure and comfort so as we saw earlier we can set up what our cabin conditioning is going to look like from there you can also look at power flow so you can see as of right now we're charging up it's kind of cool graphics and moving back we've got the owner's manual as well so a digital owner's manual but I do like it. I like that we've got our climate control settings baked right into the screen. It used to be dropped down, but for what's decided in this larger screen to have it baked in. One thing is that if you're in another version of the Escape with the smaller 8-inch screen instead, climate control settings are going to be still down under. Otherwise, fully built in, which, I mean, still looks really nice at the same time. 97.7 FM. Tuning to FM 97.7. Try to. Oh yeah. Collective Soul, a little gel. Amazing song, but I mean, the audio inside of this thing is... And that's not even at half. That's at like a third volume cranked right now. Like the audio inside of the 10 speaker system is unbelievable. So if you're an audiophile, you love audio, you want to go for this larger screen. You want to go for the 10 speaker option instead. It sounds really, really good. All right, you are going to be push button start across the entire escape lineup. We've got one four park assist, 360 camera, our max windshield defroster, and then also four drive mode. So you can select what mode you're in by pushing the button there. 
and that just takes us to a few available drive modes. Also got the volume rocker. If your phone supports wireless charging, there is the wireless charge pad available there as an option. And then moving down a tiny bit more, you can see two USB power points, so a USB Type-C and then a traditional USB. There's a 12 volt power point in there on top of that. Moving down to a rotary style shifter, so you've got park reverse neutral drive and then a dedicated low gear. Electronic parking brake, auto hold, so that's the one if we have it turned on. If you are in drive and take your foot off the brake, if you come to a complete stop, the vehicle is going to hold you in place instead. There are a few cup holders and a little coin storage place there on top of that. Because this one has the added premium pack, there is the auto dimming rear view mirror. Also, cabin control lights. And then this specific one also does have controls for the panoramic sunroof, which, I mean, this thing looks amazing. And I, I love the full panoramic roof because it just opens things up so, so nicely. I like it. So basic, you can do single button press in order to open it up the majority of the way. Secondary button press opens it up that last teeny little bit. And then just single button press in order to close. But it is nice. And like I said, I love how it just opens things up so nicely here. It's good. Typical Ford styling. We've also got sunglasses holder. The visor has our home link system built in. There's a little business card holder on the outside and on the inside. And then this thing has a vanity mirror with, the, uh, with lights built right in. And then one great thing, this thing's extending out to block all of the sun that might potentially be hitting your face, which is great. And the seats inside of this are actually fairly comfortable. A few different types of materials that are available, cloth, vinyl cloth, ActiveX seating material, etc. Just depending on the version of the vehicle that you're in. But this is nice. Seat's good. And like with the seat all the way down, so even with the sunroof, I've got like four and a half, almost five inches of space there, which is fantastic. Multi-way adjustable, so we can go forwards, backwards, up and down with it. Adjust the backrest, two-way lumbar support. The headrest inside of this thing is only two-way, so strictly up and down. We don't have that clicking forward, unfortunately, but realistically, it's still pretty nice, though. This is good. I do like what Ford's done with it, and the seats are comfortable. One thing I would love to see are ventilated first-row seats, but not available as an option. But let's hop back to that second row quickly and see what's going on space-wise. So the second row of the Escape has some similar styling to the first row, notably along the seats, because we've got this like weaved diamond texture along the seat, which looks really, really sharp. Now, one big thing, I guess, spacing-wise would be how many people can you fit inside of this? So, I mean, like I've pretty broad-shouldered, so three full-size versions of me would be very, very tight. But if you had a younger family, kids, whatever the case may be, they shouldn't have an issue here. And then you've got all the anchor points and tethers on top of that. So front-facing, rear-facing child seats, you're not going to have an issue whatsoever. And overall headspace, like I've got the seat reclined a bit right now. I'm an inch, inch and a half roughly of headspace here, which is all right. Now, there is a lever just to the left side we would use in order to be able to fold the seat forward. Like if you wanted to fold the seat down, you can also extend back a tiny little bit. And then one really cool thing, if you needed to create a little bit more space for your knees, you can do that. So I do have the driver's seat set up for my height, and then we can just pull a lever between our legs to slide the seat forwards or backwards if you needed to. So if you need to create space for the cargo area, you realistically could. But I mean, with the seat as far back as it's going to go, I've got a ton of knee space in this middle, or in the, just by the driver's seat. Middle seat, I could sit here, but the downside is the piece that's right in the middle. So kind of like flopping my legs there a little bit, but still it's fairly comfortable all at the same time. This one does have the thermoplastic rubber trays on top of that right from the factory for the first, second row, and then for the cargo area. So it is really, really nice. Take them off, spray them down, etc. A few small highlights along the door. You've got a few speakers there because this is the upgraded 10 speaker system and basic window control. It's really about it. Up overhead, there's a handle as well as a hook and a light for the driver and for the passenger side, which is useful. Oh, there is one map pocket, and that's just behind the passenger side seat, so you don't have one along the driver's side. But the one thing about the armrest, moving down, there are two power points, so a USB Type-C and then a traditional USB Type-A. So you've got four total power points inside of this thing. But other thing to point out, cup holders. So, pull down, you've got two individual cup holders here, which is great. Useful if you've got fighting kids or you need it, but there are some bottle holders along the door, as I had mentioned. 
there is a little contrast. You can definitely tell between the headliner and then the lower part. So it's just like interesting black and white contrast or black and tan contrast instead. It's different. It would be kind of neat to see like a full black or like a full white interior uh, interior here instead. Just something a little bit different. All right. Let's see. One kilometer, merge left to Allen Road. Okay. Power-wise, this thing is actually fairly respectable. Nice. Huh. I'm actually, I'm, I'm really surprised right now. This is really nice. Like, nice ride, but uh, but like I said, really, really responsive, really quiet. I love the way that the maps work now inside of Sync 4. That looks really, really cool. Ford, good job on this. And this one does have the panoramic sunroof. And that's one thing I love about the Escape is that it is full panoramic. So, I mean, look at this. It opens it up so so nicely you can vent out the panoramic roof if you want to you can open it up it doesn't open up the full way but i mean here watch this turn left to shepherd avenue west so single button press opens it up most of the way secondary button press opens it up that last little bit like an extra inch and change but i mean still that is pretty it's pretty nice and then single button press will close it all the way bad and like road noise inside of this so all the windows are up right now it's not an overly like it's it's fairly quiet by selecting our normal drive mode you'd also be able to select a few other things so like ev now ev later etc but ev charge is cool and that's actually what i'm using right now so as we're driving here the vehicle's actively charging up the electric the electric motor for us so it's amazing. Well, it's the electric battery, I should say. But I mean, as of right now, so I've been driving for about 10 minutes, 15 minutes maybe, and it was at zero. It's now at nine kilometers. And that's just through regular driving. So, I mean, it is really cool that you've got that available as an option where you can just rely on as you drive, it'll charge up. I'm actually, I'm really surprised it's charged up so fast. Like I've been driving, like I said, for 15 minutes. And between like accelerating, braking, whatever the case may be, it's charged up like, what, almost 15%. That's pretty impressive. Yorkdale Ford, nice enough to lend this vehicle to me for the afternoon to shoot the video for you guys today. So if you're looking for an Escape, if you're looking for an F-150, Super Duty, any Ford Lincoln vehicle, you definitely want to connect with them. They are highly recommended, amazing people to work with. And that was a look at the 2023 Ford Escape plug-in hybrid. What'd you think? Pretty nice car. I love what Ford did with it. Did mention you can find all of the build links and walkthroughs for the technical side of things down in the description of the video. But if you found this one useful, give it a thumbs up, share it with someone if you think they might find it helpful. And until I see you next time, take care.